Hi everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I've got a sweet little card project featuring some cute hedgehogs and some simple Copic coloring. I'm still working to get more confident with my coloring skills and I find that if I just keep it simple, I have a better chance of success. So let's take a look at the products. This stamp set I'm using today is from Pretty Pink Posh and it is called Hedgehog Friends and it's, well, it's hedgehogs and they're adorable. I also have the coordinating dies that will cut out the stamped images, plus I'm going to use another template mask from Tailored Expressions. I've got a small sampling of Copics, some Distress inks, and a blender brush. Now this blender brush is from Simon Says Stamp, but I recently got my hands on a set of brush handle clips from a company called Make It By Marco. They have a shop on Etsy, and it just allows you to color code your brushes, if you will. So you can just remember this one is the one I use with greens because I don't clean my brushes between each use. The clips are genius and so is that brush holder and I will have everything linked below. I've got some Nina Solar White for my cardstock plus a few other things as we go. So let's jump in first with this mask. Now I've used these in other videos and I will link to one here. But I love the fact that you can line up your piece of cardstock, and this is a standard USA 2 size, so that's four and a quarter by five and a half. There's etchings on the stencil to help you get it perfectly lined up. There's my pink. I know I'm going with pinks here. And I'm going to just use two colors. I had three shown in the opening supplies, but I thought, I don't, I don't really need three. I'm just gonna take two distress colors. I've got worn lipstick. I'm gonna lay that down first. And then I am going to come in and darken it up. All I wanted to do here was just create a nice soft blend, darker to lighter. And I really do think the blender brushes helped me. I used foam tools in the past. And once I went to blender brushes, I kind of never looked back. So once I got that picked raspberry in, I'm going to take that off. And that is going to set aside to completely dry. Now it's time to stamp out my images and I'll be using Memento Tuxedo Black because it is a Copic friendly ink. Got my Misty tool here, which I, I've said this once and I'll say it again. This is actually what makes me able to stamp. I absolutely love this tool. And here's a good example. I was pressing this down twice to get a good impression, but I had my magnet slightly askew. All I had to do was remove the magnet, stamp again to get the bottom of that mushroom. That would not be possible if I were doing it freehand, or what I like to call if I were free range stamping. Now my coloring is going to be very simple today. I started out with the brush tip, but see that little pointy tip? I have been working my way through all of the markers in my collection and removing the chisel tips and replacing them with the bullet tips. I have better success coloring in small spaces with the bullet tips. They're harder, if that makes sense. Like they're not as soft and flowy as the brush tips and you can replace them. I don't use the chisels for anything and so I buy a few packs at a time and slowly but surely I am eventually going to replace all of the nibs. So once I got my browns done I brought in a very simple this is like E0000 just wanted a light bit of shading. You know I keep it really simple. I'm not a master at mixing and blending but I can dot on an R20 for a little blushy cheek. And I'm just going to say R20, great color for cheeks and ears. So if you're in the market for cheeks and ears, it, it's your, it's your go-to. Now for the mushrooms. Again, I wanted to use similar colors just so that I didn't make it too complicated, if that makes sense. So adding a little bit of brown here and there for the stems. And then I will come in with some light pinks just to create a simple mushroom. Again, going with R20, I wanted to have a little bit of matchy-matchy to the cheeks, filling in the mushroom, and then for the dots, I just decided to go with a darker pink and not even attempt, well, on the small ones, it wouldn't have been possible, but no blending, just really straightforward coloring. Again, if I keep it simple, I think I have better success. All right, now I've got the coordinating dies taped into place, and I will just run these through my Spellbinders Platinum 6, pop them out, and now my little cuties are ready for my card. I decided to cut my panel down a little bit more with one of my favorite dies. This is from Waffle Flower. It's the A2 layers because I wanted that panel smaller. So I've got that in my Misty tool. I've got my sentiment already mounted on the door. I'll just ink this up with a little black ink 
and stamp that down right in the center. You're an awesome friend. Moving on. My card base is going to be from Passionate Paint Cardstock. This is from Gina K Designs. And it will fold to four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. And I'll tape it closed because I like my card bases to stay really flat when I'm adhering the card panel elements. Now I've got some foam tape on the back of the panel and I will line that up and press it down with that nice framing margin space. I've got some thin foam adhesive on the back of the hedgehogs and then I'll take just some dot runner here, this is from Gina K Designs, and I'll place that right on the card base. So I'm trying to create just a few little layers of dimension and I've got some thicker foam squares on the back of the other mushroom so that that will pop up just a little bit above the hedgehogs. To finish this card project, I'm gonna bring in a few sequins and these are also from Pretty Pink Posh. This is a really great mix. It actually has, I think, four sizes of the silver sequin. Silver sequins are kind of my favorite. I just think they're very neutral and they add a subtle bit of shine to any project without kind of overtaking the project. And that is the finish card. I really like how it turned out. And again, I think if you're relatively new to Copic coloring or you're frustrated with your results, just try to keep it simple. Simple is good. And whoever I decide is my most awesome friend, and you know who you are out there, I think they will appreciate my simple coloring efforts. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.